think it's great that um, we're able to move from one place to another and also uh, travel to another place because it opens up more possibilities of your future. But I'm wondering um, how... Uh, I'm wondering if, it, if it's only good. Like, I think that um, being transnational is to do with uh, a couple of things. One is that, you know, obviously we have cheaper airfares and uh, people are, have higher disposable incomes so that, you know, I can go back to Japan twice a year. So that's, that's really good. Um, it's also good to know, know or think that um, I could go to another country. But, you know, I was in Broome the, only about three weeks ago, and I was speaking to a um, traditional owner um, there, of one of the Yaru people. He's an elder there, and he said, and, and, and by the way, this, this he's, he's, traveled all over the world. Mm -hmm. He's, he speaks in conferences everywhere and he, he's, um, you know, he goes to indigenous conferences throughout the world. So it's not as if this particular traditional owner has never left mm -hmm. his country. He has. And he said, but where is your spirit going to return to? And despite the fact that he travels everywhere, he knows exactly where his country is. Mm -hmm. And us cosmopolitan transnationals with a lot of disposable income that go all over the world, there is a sad element to that, I must say, that you know, where is your home? I think I'm in eternal search for that. Mm -hmm. And that, that search for... Uh, the search for place, the search for belonging is, um, that's what drives my art, that's what drives my work. So I think if I found the answer, maybe I won't be um, doing the kind of things I do. My artworks has to do with the fact that I'm a migrant as opposed to a transnational. You can still stay Japanese or stay Australian or there's always this us and them, them concept even if you do move around as a transnational. So, you know, it's, I have my reservations mm -hmm. but it also gives mm -hmm. me a bit of hope as well. Yeah. I have not um, learned any other languages of any extent, mm -hmm. like if I'm going somewhere as a tourist, I might pick up the uh, you know, Italian <laughs> language yeah. um, book and try to learn. Or at one stage, I had a Russian boyfriend and I wanted to learn Russian, so I did a bit of that. One stage, I tried a bit of Indonesian because I had some Indonesian friends. But no, it hasn't been successful. And I am ashamed to say that I've been in Australia since 1981 and I do not speak an indigenous language. I just think that um, the final resting place is basically where you're going to be part of because you become part of the landscape by being buried or maybe thrown in the sea. So that's kind of important to think about, especially in a project like this, whether um, you are a transnational or a migrant. It's where, it, and it's related to what that um, traditional owner, elder said to me, where does your spirit return to? Or where does your spirit go to? And I think sometimes you're buried somewhere because of default. It may not be somewhere you planned, but, uh, well, your flesh and bone become grass and, and uh, flowers that spring up from there, so it's good to think about those things.